Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for me. <laughs> That's what happens when you're live, right? Uh, first of all, I am not the uh, president of the Global Speakers Federation. Not I'm yet. Yeah, not yet. I'm still thinking about it. I don't get enough vote yet, so. But I'm here to introduce to you really, in, uh, very personally, the, the next speaker. It's not always that you find a hero, and when I attended the first my first time to attend the Global Speaker Summit in Auckland, New Zealand this year, I found a hero. In fact, he, he was what, what, one of those few people who welcomed me first time. And it's not just about being me, be, myself being welcomed, but a few weeks ago when my leadership has been in kind of, has been challenged by so many issues, uh, this guy called me up from Dallas, Texas. And uh, it was one of those moments I can never forget when he told me something about leadership. And he says, if it's not difficult, it's not leadership. To meet my hero for today, the president of the Global Speakers Federation, Elias Canaris. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Yeah. Really? Is that the best we can do? How are you this morning? Yeah. Is that the best you can do? Are you awesome? Yeah. Excellent. That's what I want to hear. My name is Elias Canaris. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd Luna, for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to talk to you today about how to grow your business through collaboration. Thank you, Shirley Taylor, for setting the scene for us in terms of the Global Speakers Federation. In fact, when you look at the Global Speakers Federation, as she mentioned, 15 associations. According to some statistics we have seen, there can be up to 53,000 and six professional speakers around the world and you are part of a community that is making a change. In fact, what uh, was mentioned is that we are in our 20, now 22nd year. And when you think about all the speakers, yourselves here in the Philippines, in the other countries, if we just take a very conservative estimate of what is going on, it is true to say that in the speeches you deliver, in the training you give, or the books that you author, every year we will be impacting 20 million households around the world. Just think about that. You are contributing to what's happening around the world. That was us in uh, Orlando last year celebrating our 20, 20th anniversary uh, with uh, the formation of CAPS at the same time. But we are in now four or five continents, in over 20 countries, and you have this opportunity to visit different countries as part of your business, not only here in the Philippines. I was very fortunate that I went to New York City where I was speaking, and my wife came to visit with me. And my wife said to me, Elias, where do you want to go? So I said to her, I want to go to see the memorial for 9-11. Show of hands, who has been to New York City? Okay, keep your hands up if you've been to the memorial. It's a very impressive uh, situation to see after the 9-11 incident. And my wife said, but I want to go to the High Line, which is a disused bit of railway line, about one and a half to two kilometers long, that's been repurposed for the locals as a garden. So being the leader that I am, I said to my wife, after we visited, the memorial, what we'll do is we'll take the subway and we'll go across and we'll come up. She said, are you crazy? We have an opportunity to visit New York, to walk along by the Hudson River, to experience New York. And that was our journey as we went around from the memorial across the top, all the way down through the parks. Even we saw Einstein that said, love is the answer. 
And then my wife, she said to me, Elias, you travel a lot, but you're not a traveler. <gasps> I couldn't believe my wife was stabbing me. But she's so true, because we come to the conference, we come to the event, but we don't do much beyond that. Now I'm going to talk to you about how to collaborate, because Gernick Baines, the CEO of a change consultancy, YSE, oh by the way, if you want the, who wants the slides at the end of the presentation? Yep. Don't worry about taking too much. I'll give you the slides at the end of the presentation so you can just relax. Everybody happy to relax? Yeah. Yep. Oh, thank goodness. He's going to talk fast. I can't understand his accent. So it's okay. I'll give you these slides. He said that we have got silos, individuals. We can't make any more efficiency. Now we have to connect the silos. I'm going to teach you about how to connect and collaborate in your business. In fact, when you look at leadership, it's said that poor leadership is the major reason why people leave the business. 37% cite poor leadership as the main reason. 39% said they feel underappreciated. And a staggering 77% of people said they would work harder for more recognition. Think about this. Babies cry for it. Old men die for it. Recognition. So the question I want to ask you is, how do we look at leadership and apply it to the business of speaking? I'm going to talk about one of the keys of my book, which says that everything rises and falls on leadership. In fact, it was an ordinary Tuesday, except for one wardrobe malfunction, when I found I did not have a tie. And I was about to go and join an aeroplane and fly on business class. So I went to the airport and I had to find a tie, because at the time you needed that when you were traveling business class. Can somebody remember business class travel with a tie? It was so long ago. Ask your parents, maybe your grandparents, they will tell you. <laughs> so when I found the tie, I put it on, I went into the airplane, sat down, and a chap beside me had traveled all the way from India and was with me on our journey from London Heathrow to Chicago. They served us lunch. Then after lunch, I'm not sure if it was the panicked look on the staff as they're going past or the noise that I heard, which later I found was the noise of them dumping fuel from our airplane. And the pilot came on to say, ladies and gentlemen, due to a significant incident in America, the FAA has shut down all the airspace. That day was September 11, 2001. And we became one of 38 airplanes that landed in Gander Airport, Newfoundland. I'd like to share a short four minute video that explains what happened. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center. I uh, just informed of a horrible tragedy in Washington and in New York City. September 11th, 2001, uh, my partner and I were finishing a vacation in Europe and the plane all of a sudden dropped elevation really quickly and then made a turn to the right. And it looked like all of a sudden we were flying to the North Pole. And I thought, how crazy is that? All of a sudden the captain came on and he said, due to a terrorist attack in the United States, We'll be landing in Gander, Newfoundland. We're going to take us into the town and uh, <laughs> I don't know what. I was only on for about an hour or so when I got a call from the town manager saying we're expecting some planes to land in Gander. Looks like that the airspace is going to be shut down because there's a terrorist attack on the United States. This was a tiny town, population 9,000, and once those 38 planes had landed, they ended up with 6,500 stranded passengers, nearly doubling their population. And I have to admit, I'd never heard of the place before, but essentially it's a small island province in Canada on the northeast tip of, of North America. The question is, what were they going to do with us? Then all of a sudden, we're looking to our airport 
and here comes 7,000 people. We were able then to be able to go up to these people, put our arms around them and say, it's okay, we have you, don't worry. No, no questions was asked. People just came out, gave off their time, their food, their alms and everything. Well, once we knew all the flights were on the way to Gander, uh, I think the whole town kind of came together, even just going to the grocery store and getting prepared for when they all landed to welcome them to our homes. The people of Gander, they'd been cooking all day and they had taken the time to set up television because they knew that's what we wanted to see were the images of what was going on. And they set up television in a foreign country, that we small town, but we were tra treated uh, like everybody else. We almost became like one big family. Instead of having 9,000, we had 16,000 in the family. When the last plane left Gander and we were at the airport talking to the passengers, when we saw the tears of joy and the smiles on their faces, we were paid in full. That was something that I'll never forget and it's changed my life. Our people responded and, and that made, that's something that I'll always remember. Collaboration. The town of Gander opened their homes to us. After 24 hours from the time we departed to the time they let us off, going through temporary security, going with buses to Gambo, we became the guests of the Salvation Army in a small village of 2,000 population. During the time there, we had constant updates and we had support. We had to clean the church from top to bottom for five days we were there and they had a funeral on day number three. So we had to collaborate to make this all happen. So we want to acknowledge what was happening in the collaboration at Gambo and the Salvation Army. I want to share some simple steps with you on how to collaborate in your speaking business to make more money. The question is how do you grow your business through collaboration? And a good friend of mine, Dave Staunton, used to say the five A's. He'd talk on any topic to any audience, anywhere, anytime, at any price. If they wanted somebody to talk about governance, he would learn, and he'd go out and do that. Or sales, he'd learn and go out and do that. But nobody asked him to come back. He thought this is strange. So he said you have to be unique. You have to find your own voice. If you talk on leadership, then know what type of leadership. If you talk on sales, know what type of sales. If you're an MC, be the best MC. But don't try and do everything for everybody. If you want a strong and profitable business, find your voice. Specialize and find your niche. Be one inch wide, one mile deep. And again, don't worry about, I'll give you the slides at the very end. You'll have all of these to see at the very, very end. Start to author material. Nobody better than the great Sir Lloyd Luna, who authors so many books so quickly. Become the authority. And that's what, from the word author. And become a storyteller. When you have children, those who have children, put your hand up in the audience. Keep your hand up if you remember when your children, you sent them to bed at the age of five or six, what did they say? Mummy, Daddy, Auntie, Uncle, share some statistics. <laughs> no, read me a story. Be the best storytellers. In fact, I'm going to encourage you to create a mastermind. Collaborate so you have people where it's not competition, but cooperation, where you work together. So you have different areas of expertise. Get somebody like Tom Abbott, who's very good at sales, and then have somebody beside him, like Lloyd Luna, who's very good at leadership. And then when you come to this core group, you're complementary, and you can share ideas amongst yourselves. The other thing is, because you're part of the PAPS 
community, which is in the Global Speakers Federation. It means that if you travel internationally, you can look and act as a local. When you go to New Zealand, you attend our meetings at the same price as a person from New Zealand, or to APSS at the same price for somebody in Singapore. And you can learn as a local and grow your networks of people. These are ideas for you to consider. In fact, some countries have live stream. Ask yourself, can I join your live stream? You can sit here in the Philippines and still access the information from different associations. You can become a bystander, you can be a contributor, but most important, you have to be present. And then you want to look at what can we learn from the past and into the future. Here at the Global Speakers Federation, there's three things that we're encouraging. Number one, we're encouraging you to look at it from the aspect of becoming professional. Be the most professional person you can be, because now you're in your business. In fact, going from being professional, we want to help you with global partnerships. So the Global Speakers Federation will be announcing a variety of different agreements on a global basis that will filter down to you as a member of PAPS, where you will have access to products or services at a discounted rate which will help you in your business. Does anybody think that's a good idea? Yes. Absolutely. And finally, this leads to advancement. Because if you become more professional, we give you the tools and access to things that will help you build a business, you can advance and become better to help the people in your country and in other countries around the world. So do you know your strengths is a question I want to finish off with because as I said in my book, key number 19, including regular celebrations, I said that I went to New York with my wife. And this was a great experience for me. And I thought I'd write about this in my book. And my book author said to me, Elias, do the proofreading. Make sure you have two copies. One for yourself, one for a friend. You read it with a red pen and you mark everything that's wrong. Can you do that? Yes, I can do that. And I thought, who do I know that's good for proofreading? Of course, it would be my wife. So I gave her a copy. I had a copy. I took my red pen. She had her red pen. I looked at the first page. My red mark, her red mark. The same. That's good. Next page, same marks. Good, good. On the third page, she had an extra mark. I thought, ooh, I didn't see that. Until I came to the story of the High Line. And she looked at the whole story and she put the big red circle around the whole story and crossed it out. And in the margin, she said, it didn't happen like this. It happened like this. And she rewrote that part for me. That is collaboration. She gets the acknowledgement, I get the royalty. <laughs> so if you want to explore the full picture, I've got information about the slides, I've got other information including some uh, reports on leadership. Who here has got a smartphone on them? This is the only time I'm going to allow you to take your smartphone out when somebody is speaking. So take your smartphone out and go to your web browser, okay? Just take one minute to do this. This is where you can download all of the slides and some additional resources I've created for you to help you collaborate and to drive things forward. So when you go in there, gettalk.at.at forward slash manila. Do that this morning and you will download four elements, including some free reports and leadership magazine that we've created to help you to think about collaboration. Because as my wife has said, Elias, you travel a lot, but you're not a traveler. But now I'm spending extra three days here in Manila to understand how to become a traveler. Thank you very much.